Origins of the Thirty Years' War The Thirty Years' War was one of the most significant uh, wars in all of Euro European history because it totally reshaped the geopolitical atmosphere and the religious atmosphere as well uh, and allowed Protestants to practice freely even in predominantly Catholic nations. Um, but how exactly did the Thirty Years' War start? Is there any one event we can trace it back to? Although the origins of the war are complicated, there are some significant events that we can sort of pinpoint and say, this is how it started. The Two Sides To understand why the Thirty Years' War started, you really need to take a wider look at the environment uh, which could give birth to such a bloody and horrible war, uh, and that is, of course, 17th century Europe. Now, uh, the Thirty Year Years' War started because of this massive culture war that, to a degree, is still going on today. And that is the culture war between the Catholics on one side uh, and the Calvinists and Protestants on the other. Uh, and in 17th century Europe, this was dominating everything from dinner conversation to the battlefield. Uh, and that's because the traditionalists and the Catholics thought that the Catholic Empire should take hold of the entirety of Europe, and the Protestants wanted the freedom to religion. And there was this very obvious geographical divide that divided the two sides. And that was uh, <clears throat> North and South. The Northern uh, states, the, uh, for example, Brandenburg, which would turn into Prussia, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, they were all Protestant, uh, including Bohemia, which was even in Central Europe. Um, but the southern states, Italy, Spain, uh, France, um, Bavaria, they were all Catholic. And so, not only would you have the culture war, but, you, you know, actual wars would break out because of the already tense political climate. Because they were neighbors, and but they had different geographical features. Um, and so, war was really obvious when the Habsburgs took control of Bohemia. The Habsburgs were a Catholic dynasty, um, and they had been in control of Austria for a long time, but when they took control of Bohemia, everyone knew it was not going to turn out well, because Bohemia was a Protestant land, and they liked their freedom of religion, as demonstrated by the proto-Protestant group, the Hussites, uh, and the Habsburgs were strictly Catholic, and they elected the Habsburgs elected their own king to become king of Bohemia, and that is Ferdinand II. Um, and Ferdinand II, basically the second he got there, uh, bans the construction of Protestant churches, and he persecuted a lot of Protestant clerics and uh, noblemen. And so the defenders of Bohemia and the noblemen got together, and they were like, we need to do something. Uh, and what they did is called the Second Defenestration of Prague. And defenestration means to throw something out of the window. Um, and so they all got together, and they took these two governors and their secretary, who were loyal uh, to the Habsburgs and Catholic, and they threw out threw them out of the window of a castle. And they would have died because it was several meters up, you know, 15 meters actually, so I think something like that. Uh, and the only reason they survived, and this is sort of absurd, is they landed in a, a pile of manure. But uh, the secretary made a trip to the Habsburg court, he was like, this is really bad. They're going to depose the king, Ferdinand II, and they tried to kill me and my buddies. Uh, and so the Habsburgs were like, okay, we'll get together an uh, army and uh, take control of Bohemia, which now appears to be in active revolt. Uh, and so the Bohemians elected their own king, who uh, was already a prince of other German states, um, and they went up uh, fleed from the Catholic forces, which were made up of southern German states and Austrian soldiers. Um, and they went to the White Mountain, which is a plateau in the city of Prague. At that time, it was a couple miles west of Prague, actually. But uh, they decided no army is going to charge up a mountain uh, in the dead of winter, uh, and so they thought they were safe. Um, but that, of course, would lead to the Battle of White Mountain, which was a devastating Bohemian The Battle of White Mountain 
What's really astonishing about the Battle of White Mountain is how quickly it uh, everything came together and how quickly the battle itself happened. Uh, the battle the battle occurred in the November of 1620. That was only two odd years after the second defenestration of Prague, which happened in 1618. And in that time, the Protestants had been able to rally an army of some 30,000 Protestant soldiers from across uh, Germany, um, the Baltics, uh, Scandinavia, and, of course, Bohemia. Uh, and on the other hand, um, under the stewardship of the Count of Tilly, the Holy Roman Empire and the, the Catholic army established something called the Catholic League. Um, and they also amassed some 30,000 soldiers that they could use as an army. Um, and so the Catholic League, League penetrated Bohemia rather quickly in their invasion. Um, and so Frederick V, uh, who was the Protestant king of Bohemia, kind of got forced into a retreat. And, um, but he had a military advisor and political advisor with him named Christian of Anault. And he was very highly regarded, but uh, he kind of had a bit of a snafu at the Battle of White Mountain. He told Frederick V, who was the leader of the Bohemians, of course, that they should uh, uh, pitch a camp at uh, White Mountain, which is a few miles west of Prague, um, and uh, in the hopes that the Catholics either wouldn't try to rush them, because, you know, rushing up a mountain uh, in the dead of winter isn't typically too good a an idea. Um, uh, but, uh, he kind of underestimated the Catholic League, League in all honesty, because that's exactly what they did. Uh, the Catholic League was pretty much hot pursuit the entire time. And so when the Protestants had pitched their camp, they were there rather fast. Uh, and so within the hour, he, um, uh, since the battle started, the Protestants were totally routed. Um, they had lost almost all of their cannons. Uh, their entire baggage train, uh, and um, some 4,000 men. Now, the 4,000 men, con like, considering they had an army of some 30,000, doesn't sound too bad, but, I mean, of course, it's 4,000 lives. And cannons were very expensive and very hard to maintain, so losing any cannon would have been a terrible loss. The fact that they lost all their cannons was terrible, and not to mention they lost their entire baggage train. Um, so... The Battle of the White Mountain effectively ended the rebellion in uh, Bohemia, and Ferdinand II, who was the Catholic king of Bohemia, uh, drafted a new constitution and ended the rebellion pretty swiftly. Uh, and that had some major ramifications, and I'll go over those in a second. Consequences of the Battle Some of the consequences of the Battle of White Mountain are, of course, that uh, Ferdinand II the Catholic King of Bohemia reclaimed the throne, uh, and the largely Protestant nation of Bohemia was put under Catholic control. Um, which, of course, wasn't a great idea, because that could only lead to domestic strife. Um, but also, the right to religion was completely abolished uh, in Ferdinand II throughout the Bohemian Constitution, and wrote a new one in 1627 which established an author authoritarian government that would remain in the hands of the Han Habsburgs up until 1918 and uh, the end of the World War I. Uh, and so that was a huge deal in and of itself, but also after Ferdinand II took power, uh, he rounded up all the rebel leaders and executed them, which is pretty reasonable for the time, but he still killed dozens and dozens of Bohemia's leading nobility. So that crippled the nation politically. Uh, in addition to that, he also did something which is kind of stupid. He uh, illegalized Protestant Protestantism in general uh, and expelled all Protestants in the nation, or he tried to at least. And uh, we're, that just wouldn't work, period. You know, Protestantism still existed in Bohemia. Uh, during the Thirty Years' War and after the Thirty Years' War, uh, whether it was allowed or not. But, uh, he still illegalized it all the less, which is a pretty slimy move, uh, since a king's job is to be a good leader to his people. But those are only some of the ramifications of the Battle of the White Mountain. The big ones 
are uh, on a wider scale. Uh, it was the first violent battle in the entire Thirty Years' War, and it established Bohemia and the Holy Roman Empire as the theater of war. Um, uh, which, of course, was terrifying, because it threatened the very fabric of the Holy Roman Empire itself, which was already fairly fragile, as it was an institution made up of multi multiple semi-autonomous states under very loose um, federal control, I guess you could say, since it was a federation of sorts. Um, and so, the Battle of White Mountain, who came out on top? The Catholic League. The Catholic side came out strong in the beginning, uh, and the imperialists seemed to almost win the war outright at the Battle of White Mountain since they'd won Bohemia, but that would be soon to change. Um, as uh, we can gather from history, the Catholics did not win the Thirty Years' War, uh, at least not to the extent they wanted to, because there's no Catholic Empire in Europe, and there wasn't 300 years ago. So you can just kind of gather from the geopolitical environment of today that uh, they did not win in the end. But um, to outlaw Protestantism uh, and an imperial victory was a huge deal this early in the war. And you can definitely see that reflected um, in the writings of that year. But uh, yeah, so that is the second def defenestration of Prague and the Battle of White Mountain. Thank you for watching.